from the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best of New York Giants Sports Talk Entertainment. Hey, it's Wednesday, the 23rd. A lot going on to talk about. I want to talk about Charles Cross. Not going to talk about Malik Wills for a day. <laughs> I lie. I might talk about him later. Uh, but we want to talk about the Giants offensive line situation. I want to talk about what's going on with Cross and the, the perception that the Giants may even try to grab him at five, which I think would be a tremendous mistake. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, we're going to have another... Uh, draft, not a draft preview, but we're going to talk about the draft. We're going to talk about free agency on our Sunday show at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which we do every Sunday. Well, also, if you didn't get the chance, go download the online Big Blue mobile app. It's free. Right now, it's only on the Google Play Store. You are supposed to be able to get notifications alert when videos are posted. You can watch all of our videos. You can watch our live streams. You can watch the podcast. You can connect on to online Big Blue Twitter. This is version one. A couple versions will be coming on the way, and this is always going to be free. I want to talk about Charles Cross. Everyone's talking about Charles Cross for the Giants now. The Giants sent out a couple scouts to see him. Um, he basically did the right tackle. They said he did a lot of work at right tackle um, at, during his pro day. They said that his pro day was, was awesome, was great. It was an amazing pro day, which I love because you have the people that read this and they're giant fans. Say, Charles Cross had an amazing pro day. That's just so wonderful. We need to draft him. Malik Willis has an amazing pro day. They're like, well, he, you know, he just didn't. He just doesn't play well. <laughs> the hatred is abound. Um, it's interesting because, like I said, I I like Charles Cross. I don't like him in the top ten. I think he should be somewhere. If is he the sec? Is he the third best? Or is he the third ranked tackle in this draft? I I could say that. Like I said, I'm an icky fan. I'm still a Neil fan. I think there are some good things. There's a lot of good things about Cross, but there's a lot of things that um that he needs to improve on. There's things that he needs to work on. Um and you know, one of those things is gonna to have to be his technique and power in the run game. That is going that is going to be an interesting situation and the fact that he's going to have to play right tackle in the giants offense. I mean, he's never going to say, I don't want to be a right tackle. I want to be a left tackle because you want to get drafted. And they say a lot, you know, there's the scuttlebutt is that the giants are extremely interested in cross. I I have my reservations and, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this right now. He's a guy that's going to fit more in my mind because of his frame and his strength. He's going to be more of a zone blocking guy. You know, he's he, he's going to be you because of his lateral mobility. He's, he's you know, his primary role may be in focus to be like a cutoff guy to onto like backside plays, which there's nothing wrong with that. He is a good pass protector. He's probably, in my mind, technically one of the best pass protectors in this draft. Um, but like I said, it's 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 there's more to playing football than just pass protecting. He's got a quick first step. He reminds me in some ways of Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas had a quick first step in college and that went away that first year and he came back second. I think has, I think a lot of that has to do with injury. And the good thing about him, since he is not the strongest guy with that first, with that quick first step or that quick first burst, it immediately lets him gain leverage on pass blockers. And he kind of can then dictate the pass rush. Now, the problem is you're going to find he's going to have more issues in this league in reference to bull people bull rushing him. Um, I just don't think he has the strength enough to anchor on defenders on the bull rush. And I think he's going to get pushed back into the quarterback because there are things that, like I said, if you look at his quickness, yes, quickness is uh, quickness for an offensive lineman is definitely a trait that you want, but you need to have the ability to stop the onslaught of the rush. And like I said, I think with his frame and his body type, I I don't know if he's going to gain much more weight at 6'5", 305 pounds. Usually you gain some weight going into the pros, but his body frame does not look like it's going to be, he's going to be putting on much more mass. Now, one of the things that if you have to look at in regards to the films at Mississippi State, they operated in wide splits quite extensively, which put every lineman in space. So, you know, and that took advantage of his lateral mobility that took advantage of, again, one of his traits, because he's again, again, he's a guy to me that has good to exceptional, 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 (laughs) got it right now, lateral mobility is pass sets which helps him basically kind of redirect his body weight and mirror defenders. I don't, I don't want to get into technical stuff, 
I'm not going to worry about his length and his arms because I, I, you know, like I said, unless you have little T-Rex arms, I, I, I mean, I, you know, you, you always hear about the people with small, short arms. I never get into that. I think if you, you, if you have the technique and you have the ability, you know, like I said, unless you have really tiny arms, <laughs> I'm, I'm never worried. I'm not going to worry about that. He's got really good hand placement, which is good. And and again, like I said, he he is technically proficient. And he's technically sound in certain areas. He has excellent timing in regards to where he places his hands and how he places it. But I think that falls into again his mobility and his quickness. He's a he's a good. He's not a great athlete. He's a good athlete. But the problem is, and I've said this before, he is going to be taking on bigger and stronger athletes in college. He he held his own. I'm excuse me in the pros. Probably, he held his own in college. But like I said, he's going to be taking on bigger and stronger athletes in the pros. And it's and I've said it a million times. You're not always playing. You know Mississippi State. You know Mississippi State's not playing. You know Sister Mary of the Poor. They're they're going to be unless they're playing the Giants. They're going to be playing competitive teams with guys that are bull rushers. And I'm concerned that he is going to give up some ground on those power rushing defenders that are going to be coming at him and it's going to collapse the right side of the line. And like I said, I worry, I don't worry about his pass protection as much against speed rushers and guys that he can use his quickness and his lateral mobility, but with his frame being so lean, that's not a, that's not a great combination for run blocking. And I think in some ways, if you are going to draft him, and this is what I'm getting to, this is the point that I'm trying to make. If you are going to draft him, he is going to be best served as a left tackle where his primary role can be a pass protector. And I think that's where the Giants are going to have a difficult situation here. I personally wouldn't take him into the latter half of the draft. You want to talk about Malik Willis, bad games. Go look at, go look at the old miss game. Cause everyone points to the old miss game with Malik Willis. Go look at the old miss game and then tell me and tell me what you then think of Charles cross. Cause I've said it before. And if people don't listen college stats to me, mean nothing. Once you get to the pros, that's it. College stats mean nothing. They don't mean anything on the draft. They don't mean anything to the wall. But if you want to watch a technically poor game and a bad game, watch Old Miss. And I worry because you always hear about his versatility. There are some guys that we've that have drafted in the last couple of years who, when they came out, had versatility. You know, thought they could do so many things. And the first guy that comes to mind, ninth overall in 2015, was Eric Flowers. Eric Flowers, to me, though, had the size, he had the strength, he had the look. He just was not a good player. <laughs> he was not a good player at the tackle. He's a guy who they got exposed for not having proficient enough quickness or speed to play the left tackle position. And it wasn't until they moved him to the inside did he start playing like an, off, an NFL offensive lineman. And he took him a while to get there. Another guy you think about is second overall, Greg Robinson for the Rams. You know, if you take a look at him, everyone thought he was going to be, everyone thought he would, Greg Robinson was going to be this guy, that he was going to be this anchor, he was going to be a stalwart. He never paid, He never planned out in St. Louis. I mean, he had decent contribution. Another team that uh, declined, his, declined his fifth year option, he, he did really nothing noteworthy for his contract. The uh, well, the Lions took a flyer on him and traded a six round pick for him back in sixteen. I assume seventeen didn't go well there either for him. He had a shoulder injury, an ankle injury, and then he was released by the Lions in uh, November of I assume November of that year. Then he spent two seasons with the Rams, basically being just a competent depth piece. But it's another guy that if you take a look at, and then he also had the legal problems. <laughs> Uh, we're not, we're not going to get it. We're not going to get into some of the legal problems. Uh, but if you take a look at his ability again, another guy with versatility that was supposed to change the complexion that probably shouldn't have gone as high as he did. The other guy I keep thinking of at eighth overall is Jack Conklin back in Tennessee in 16. 
You know, he had a great, tremendous first season. He went downhill. He tore his ACL. He never really reached the levels that they thought it'd be to again to another another time that the uh, uh, Titans didn't even pick up his fifth year option, declined his fifth year option on his contract. He went on to sign with the Browns in the offseason for three years and forty two million. I mean, again, but he has more, he had he was a guy that was kind of reversed. He had a reputation as a run blocker and not a very good as a pass blocker. So, like I said, you have to t- and these were guys that were all touted of having versatility. Could play the left side or the right side that came when they came out into the draft. Charles Cross to me, like I said, I I I mean, I was trying to fee, fee, excuse me, I was trying to figure out where I had him on my top 51. Because I was looking at my top 51. Uh, and I redid my top 50. I didn't really I moved some of the guys down in my top 51. I actually have Charles Cross ranked as the 25th player on the draft. And I have Drake London, Kenny Pickett, and people like that above him. I got Tyler Lindebaum at 18, but he's going to drop down even more. So, I mean, it's it's interesting. I, I just don't want the Giants to get into a situation where they're going to make a mistake by picking the guy that does one thing extremely well, but then overlooking all the other issues that he can potentially have. And you could also change the name in regards to that and put Malik Willis's name in there as well. Because that's what people that's all they want to talk about. But like I said, this guy scares me a lot. And I, he scares me to the fact that we could be reaching unless we're going to trade down. We could be reaching. We're definitely reaching for him at five. We would still be reaching at seven. And, and that's the way I think the Giants need to look at. It. I just hope they don't get enamored with his lateral mobility and what he they perceive to be pass blocking expertise when that expertise really fits more on the left tackle side. That's all I got to say about That's all I got to say about that. And I got this is Total Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you like, subscribe. You ring that bell, you know what I mean? That'd be awesome.